This is by far the slowest character I've ever seen in a video game. I've been walking around for the past 40 minutes and I've only seen Scissor Man once. And at this point, I don't give a shit how much noise I make running around or if I'm screaming because maggots are coming out of the faucet. I just want something to happen to break up the monotony of walking around this goddamn house. I'm not trying to be funny here. Walking around is unbearably slow. Especially when you're trying to do something simple like turn on a light switch or go up and down a flight of stairs. She's as slow as a second coat of paint. You can run, but it uses up your energy, which you need if Scissor Man corners you. The only way that you can recharge it is by waiting. It takes a minute and a half if your energy is completely drained. And that's just ridiculous, because you have to constantly stop and catch a breath every time something spooks you or you get attacked. Yeah, real fucking exciting game you got there. What's going on everybody? How are you there? Now typically I don't like to revisit things very often. But today I actually wanted to show you something really special by Bob Schneider 45 and this is Clock Tower Deluxe. And if you'd seen the review that I did almost a year ago, you'd get the general idea that I liked the game and I thought it looked really, really good. It just had some serious gameplay mechanic issues that kind of knocked the experience down a couple of pegs and kept the game its full potential. And what Clock Tower Deluxe aims to do is to take those gameplay issues, fix them completely, and add some of the content from Clock Tower to First Fear, and also mouse support. So how could you go wrong with something like that, right? So grab a drink, and let's click some damn games. Now this is going to be an interesting approach for me because, like I said, I've already reviewed this game from top to bottom, so there's not going to be really anything new for me to experience and react to. So I figure the best way that I can give this hack any semblance of justice is by stacking my experience playing it today next to the experience that I had when I reviewed it, and you can see the difference for yourself. So let's just dive right into that shit. This is by far the slowest character I've ever seen in a video game. My kids move faster when I ask them to do their chores. <sighs> move your ass already. Walking around is unbearably slow, especially when you're trying to do something simple like turn on a light switch or go up and down a flight of stairs. She's as slow as a second coat of paint. Now the biggest complaint that I had about the game was Jennifer's movement speed because it yanks you out of any immersion that you have with this game whatsoever. You get into the chase, really really cool, nice and tension filled, and then as soon as it's over you have to rest which takes a minute and a half. And then getting from point A to point B so you can solve one of the puzzles or find one of the story items, it just takes forever. Going in the main hallway from one end to the other took forever and you're afraid to run because that drains your energy and then you have to sit and rest for another minute and a half so as soon as you're getting into the game it just yanks you out of it and then you want something to happen again but the problem is is that when it happens then you have another dead zone it's just that sucked but what Clock Tower Deluxe does is not only does it fix her movement speed, it also fixes her regeneration speed. So now you can finally run up and down the steps, and you can also not be afraid of running down the hallways because you don't want to lose your health. Because the second that your health goes down, you can just rest and you're back up and running again in five seconds flat. I love it. It's kind of a shame there's no mouse support because it would have been nice to have something else that I could use the friggin' mouse for besides Mario Paint. But even with the controller, the cursor moves along and reasonable speed. Now something else that I bitched about in the review was the fact that there was no mouse support whatsoever. Because come to think of it, and still thinking about it, the only time that I could ever use the SNES mouse was with Mario Paint, and I got sick of that in about a week and a half. Now if they were able to add mouse support for games like this, or games like Shadowrun, that would be fantastic. Now what does Clock Tower Deluxe do? It actually puts fucking mouse support in. And believe it or not, it's actually really, really good, and it's really intuitive. I mean, the cursor moves around really great. All you have to do is left click and that interacts, right click is your panic button, and if you want to open up the inventory, you just scroll the mouse down and there's your inventory right there. But Bob, if you're watching this one, I would put some type of a note in there for how to rest the character because I couldn't figure it out. I mean, in retrospect, maybe if you hold down one of the buttons, it'll have you do it, but that was the only reason why I actually switched from the mouse back to the controller button is because I knew those controls. So if you put something in there that says, hey, this is how you do it, I guarantee you that everybody's going to be enjoying it with the mouse support. That couldn't have done better except for that.
Now, adding in the content from Clock Tower, the first fear is really, really nice. And come to think of it, that's one of the things that actually really pissed me off and disappointed me about the original in the first place. It was that if it was just released on the Super Nintendo, you could look at some of the issues and be like, well, if it was the first time doing it, it was an older system, you can let some things slide. But when they re-released it on the PS1 as Clock Tower, the first fear, they added scenes and they added content, but they didn't fix any of the original issues that it had. And at that point, there's no excuse. Now, what Clock Tower Deluxe manages to do is it actually adds stuff like some of the cutscenes, and it also adds that zombie that's in the closet thing that kind of reminds me of the Tar Man from Return of the Living Dead. And that changes around where one of the key locations is, and that's something new right there, and I did enjoy it quite a bit. Can't complain about that. And then finally, one of the last changes that they made for it was the credit sequence didn't take 20 goddamn minutes to get through. This was just sped up nicely. And I mean, all in all, if you're a fan of the Clock Tower series and you love these games to death, or if you're even interested in trying them out for the first times, this right here is a definite must-try. Because, like I said, it took every single issue that I had with the original and completely fixed it. It's almost like... like... he watched my review, and he took some of the things that I suggested and implemented them. Did... Did I change the way? No, fucking, I'm not that arrogant that I would think that somebody would watch one of my fucking reviews and make some common sense changes. But seriously though, this is really, really impressive. Because it just goes to show that you don't need to change the levels around, and you don't need to do a whole bunch of crazy shit. Sometimes, just doing some really simple changes can make a decent game great. And for survival horror, even early survival horror, this is about as close to perfect as you could possibly get. Seriously, Bob, my hat's off to you, man. Great job with that one. And keep up the fantastic work. And on that note, that's just about gonna do it for me. So, as always, thank you guys so much for dropping by and inviting me into your day like this. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate all the support that everybody's been giving me lately and all the new additions to the channel. Thank you guys so much. I wouldn't be here without you. So, I will be checking in on you next Wednesday. I got a really cool new game that I'd love to show you guys. I'm also gonna be working on some supplemental b-roll footage for uh, phasmophobia i'm just going to be doing some spooks and scares and stuff like that making a nice little super cut of it i'll be dropping them randomly just as i go along so like i said wednesday we'll keep going with the new shit and if i don't see you wednesday i'll check it on you next friday with another rom hack review so i hope you guys are having a great week i hope everybody by you is safe and healthy and just that everything is good let me know how you're doing everybody all right so until we meet again oh vd shane Bye-bye now.